This one's feeling... This one's feeling a little spooky. Maybe I'm feeling a little spooky. Which... That's something to be concerned about. If you've ever spent any time with me, particularly any time trapped on a boat for hours. If you haven't, book your trip. It's mid-April. Things are Things are getting spicy out there, and I think I'm, ooh, that's E minor, flat, I don't know music. Yeah, I think I normally have one of these background something else, some other light on, but maybe I'm feeling like just focus on me type type something. Yeah. Who knows though, really? We are tying, I'm tying, with Olive Marabou and some other stuff. About a shank, shank and a half. I don't go super long on the tails and I've, this is a, a repeat. I've been thinking like what, you know, what fly should I tie? At the end of the day it doesn't really matter because I end up talking about so much other stuff, but I also tie this a lot, so maybe I should do like a representative sampling. But I think the last one that I did with this was a while ago. And I'm not putting too many changes in it. Kappa. I don't know why that was Boston Copper. Like the like a, like a Kappa. I don't even know anyone from Boston. Yeah, so peanut envy mostly. And, and really the only variations, I guess, are going a little more sparse on the tail, taking it off the sides, taking the marabou off the sides, um, blending colors because For as much time as I'll spend standing over the sink with the sprayer swirling water out of a bowl until most of it escapes with different uh, different bowl shapes, depths, they all have different properties. I will spend ten times that dyeing little pieces of, of dyeable stuff in order to achieve that medium, not light, not dark, medium green, olive. It's also not super green. It's not brown olive. It's not brown, medium green olive. And then I end up getting some some pretty cool Nutcracker.
God, it has been windy. It has been windy. I almost don't even want to talk about it. But I'm going to, because I need to. It's important to me. How windy has it been, Ellis? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, speaking of me, I got a new sponsor for the show. The first major sponsor for the for this show, for this show. It's me. I'm going to get some some shirts that don't look like I literally picked the first font that was available, like the Times New Roman equivalent. I did want to see what stuff looked like looked like. All right, so wire in, dubbing loop on. Ice dub, olive, some copper, some tan. You know what? Actually, this last one I did, I'm digging. With just tan. I kind of like this back hook to be more saddly, while the front hook occasionally I'll, I'll do schlopping This is a size 10 A-Rex Universal Stinger. I'm doing another one of those up front. Uh, it is the equivalent of a size... Two Yamagatsu B10S. I could use my rotary function, but apparently my brain said, no, nah, we're going to do this. Which it tends to do. I go, hey, here's a good idea. <laughs> You want to do, hey brain, you want to do something with um, some proven, you know, dynamics of I swear to fucking God, my computer is like I'm getting spammed by anti anti-spam software actually pretty annoying I'm downplaying it so yeah go ahead brain how about this thing with some results that are um, predictable and some input effort and process that seems reasonable and also like within a time frame that, that is nor like expected normal feasible and my brain's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And then I start doing whatever it is. And my brain's like, hmm. How about, let's add a couple things here. Not too many. This is still reasonable. This is still, it's basically the same thing. Um, I, I do kind of want to do a second thing. 
and also something before it, and I'd like to finish earlier than we initially thought, and what's that other thing that I wanted to do? It's like, alright, well, fuck that plan. So these are some rubber legs that I got at Watson's Marina. Go to your conventional shop. I don't know. The I assume I feel like I've I've isolated myself from the quote unquote typical fly fishing world intentionally because it's super fucking annoying to hear things like it only counts on fly, which honestly it it certainly counts a lot more. Um Watching a brown totally commit on a Rapala is pretty fucking cool, but there is, it's way more fun fishing, fishing with flies. Anyways, this is, uh, these are just jig skirts. My buddy Jack Shirk lives over that way and it told me about this joint I'm kinda of leaving these a little longer than I, than I typically do and dude they just had just trays and trays of all different types of rubber legs there's that Whatever, one of those I just tied in. We'll cross that bridge again. Yeah, that guy hanging off. Opalescent? Holographic opalescent? A large brass cone head. I really don't mind doing a medium tungsten. Going going real sparse on these. I this is this one's shaping up. I really don't have a you know, this is the best way to do it. This is the number of lead wraps, etc. It's almost all of the time that I'm tying. I, I do typically spin that off, so we're going a little heavier today or for this one. But yeah, the, the tungsten, man, I've caught, I, I'm not gonna say I have a love-hate relationship with this fly, but boy, it is boring to fish if it's not working. Just because it's getting a little bit of depth, it's olive, so I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not tracking it as much. I certainly do use this as my lower profile. It, it was this, this was the first confidence fly. Getting, getting fish out of the gunpowder and the savage. Very different areas um, of Maryland, but tailwaters kind of my first tailwater experiences and yeah move, moving it real fast wade fishing you know chucking it all the way across the current seam into that slack water and I was kind of just just getting going and it was cool. 
it was, it was cool to get feedback and actually have a confidence fly because gosh for I don't know how long the the term confidence fly as it related to streamers was just didn't exist for me then it becomes dangerous because it's like you watch something get munched however many different times in all these different conditions when you, you try other flies for some period of time but then go back to that confidence fly and shocking news if you fish it hard enough it gets munched it gets munched that might be my book title A strange late 20s and early 30s. Wait, that would be the secondary part. It gets munched. Half a decade of weird shit. It gets munched. <laughs> uh... Oh, this is fucking annoying. It gets munched. So then you watch that happen with the peanut envy a few more times, and it's like, all right, well, I'm going to be starting with that, or at least when you start going back to it faster, and it, it does get munched, though. So... Norton... Antivirus close close everything I'm sure there's a bunch of background noise with that too which of course I take very seriously I bet you can hear the birds That reduction in fan speed from this computer is because I closed the windows that were open for Norton antivirus. I swear to fuck. They're all trying to get me. Everyone's trying to get you, probably. But some of them are also trying to get me. Thankfully, I'm less insecure about it. I'll make that abundantly clear. You are the one who is insecure. I'm not. Yeah, what was I talking about? It gets munched. Tying shit to a hook. Basically making earrings as a living. Making earrings and... Picking through barrels of dead deer parts. Um, colon. I have nothing to be insecure about. <laughs> Making earrings for fish. and digging through barrels of warm deer entrails, colon, I live with my choices every day.
copper wire. Now when I was, I mean, legitimately elbow deep in, in deer, like entrails, with the, the not good, the not keeping barrel, the worth throwing this out barrel at the deer processor, the worth throwing this out barrel that started two days ago and it was uh, 72 degrees yesterday, barrel. These guys weren't saving tails for me yet. It's still impossible to get them to. We'll, we'll see how, see what I end up doing this next year. And start branching out a little bit. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, six months prior to that, I was sitting in, in a cubicle. I could do nothing and get paid. I mean, it would become a problem, like, in a while, you know? And yeah, you know, there were always times where shit had to get done quickly, but there were large swaths of time, especially towards the end. I was working on more internal stuff, and I just had a lot of stuff just, just ready to go. And so, with, without really a whole lot of knowledge about that, others requesting it would be like, yeah, can you get this? And it's not like I had this thing where, I'm, you know, I just don't do anything for four days and then be like, oh, yeah, I just finished this. It was really hard. It, I had stuff like 60, 70% of the way there. And I'd more or less fuck off for a few days. I mean, there were some people. I feel like it was also a relatively... Healthcare consulting in DC is a bunch of like, God, if you ever, if you are one of these, which some of you may be, you'd probably be good at streamer fishing because you're so broken and hard on yourself about everything. You strive for perfection and all walks of life and just can't seem to find it, can you? Like a Booz Allen, McKinsey, God, McKinsey folks. Yeah, but it was also healthcare stuff. And and so there was sort of the old guard people that worked at I'm blocking your whatever. Worked at some of the big insurance companies. I mean, there were some folks that legitimately I was impressed with with their ability to continue to get promoted and and genuinely never add any value. And I mean, let me rephrase that. People will get promoted and not only will they not add value, it, what they did was constantly detract. They took value away the whole time by saying stupid shit constantly, by emailing unnecessary stuff, by requesting just requesting, just tell me what the fucking numbers. I mean, I'll, I'll create formulas behind the numbers um, so that we can explain them to someone who's going to pay us money. But realistically, just you should just, let's all agree that it's five and, and I'll just go doop and then we'll print it out. What the real challenge was, or, or of the real 
wasn't really a challenge. The real uh, job in a lot of this was just to find out who was the one to, if you are in this line of work, listen up. You find out who's the one making decisions. Where are my fucking rubber legs? You. Yeah. Find out who's the one making decisions, and I'm willing to bet that he or she has someone that they rely on for their decision making that gets paid substantially less than they do and works substantially more than they do so you talk to them that's the real and they just want something defensible they just want something that not going to fold the company if and when it fails um, and wasn't created by total bullshit or if it was you admit to it and God damn, you're in the clear. So, when I was, if I had stood in the barrel, I would have been waist deep. When I was balls deep, kind of like the, the grape, like mashing grapes to turn it into wine. I was doing that with deer entrails. When I was doing that, I thought, man, six months ago, sitting in an air-conditioned office, just, just eating tobacco, getting paid, I didn't miss that for a second. Still don't. Yeah, pe people have asked me, you know, days on the boat are long, and boy, if you aren't talkative, I'll fill space. I'm getting better at that, but... So kind of telling, telling my story, and especially for people that are in that position, which is you know it's a, it's a good comfortable position to be in for a young professional. They're they're kind of I can I can hear every once in a while just whiffs of. So it is possible. Yeah, it is. But, there's a speed bump or two, but so I'll get you know, a very common reaction or response to that, we'll say, career path is do I miss it? No, not for a fucking second. It's it's interesting too, as I say that, you know, I could just be done. I could stop talking and be done with this fly and this video. We're going to switch to GSP. I kind of want that a little tighter, and then I also like doing a, a, a scruffy dubbing loop. So that it doesn't look, it doesn't have this like wrapped around look. But yeah, it's it's cool to, cool, it's interesting to be able to observe what, like some good things about that, about the 9 to 5 life. 
and working for someone else or working for a larger company or just getting, you know, getting a weekly paycheck, going into the office. Um, it's good for you in certain ways. And I think for some people it's good for them, period. But just having a little dubbing wax on the GSP, having routine, having people who expect to see you during the day, waking up and needing to show up somewhere and, and having that not Whenever I, I, I looked at new jobs or, God, reviewing job descriptions for our company, it was, is this person a self-starter? Which kind of made me laugh at then, but now I, I feel entitled with my reaction to it because it's like, ha. Huh, is someone who is applying for a job where they're going to get paid a bunch of money to work for someone else a self-starter? Not to be disparaging of that, because you do have to be motivated and create your own shit. Um, but you're expected to be, if you don't show up to work, you're going to get fired. Uh, me? Now? If I don't do this... Maybe I will quit. I can't get fired. I'm going to just keep talking and trimming these rubber legs. Now, what I'm going to do... is tie up... A min oh, so congratulations, you have tied a peanut envy. It's, it's uh, two woolly buggers connected with wire. And you put it near fish. And these hooks are small enough to where you might get away with a dog shit set. Where you lift your rod tip up. But realistically... You should be uh, you should be pulling on your line to strip set, which can happen almost automatically if after you cast, you point your rod tip at your fly and don't move it, and tap 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 tap, give it these short little pop pops just with your line. Don't move your rod tip. Don't do that. That's for a fast action, seven foot conventional rod. Nine foot floppy tipped fly rod. Doesn't matter if it's super fast action. Not made for this. Maximum speed right here. Now you're in your kill. That's when they eat and you're coming back. And I guess it, it you can come back and set at the same time, except you're not doing that to animate the fly. You're coming tight, then you're on your kill, and you're going to come tight again with the rod. So you're teeing yourself up for a rod set. Or you have to do this, just point at it, I have feelings. Can you tell? I'm going to tie up a mini one of these. Is this helpful? It's getting warm. It's getting buggy. If you're watching this and you haven't fished with me this year, right now, or you're not coming in the next two weeks, you have missed the caddis hatch, that's okay.
Because fuck it, right? You know, just dry flies. Just like the biggest hatch on the East Coast. Nah, stripers are moving up. Probably pretty soon. I got a jet boat. So that's cool. I got some work to do on that before I'm guiding out of it. And... Can someone just turn this off? This is where I need a producer or someone to just be like, 